gospel hip hop, right? Gospel, what am I looking for? Gospel rap. Um, when I first was introduced to it, I was I, I was besotted. I was beside. I loved it like no man's business, right? It enabled me to find this uh, these people online called P4CM, right? Uh, Passion for Christ movement, and they did a lot of poetry. Uh, like gospel poetry right and i loved it and from p4cm i then was led to a lot of artists that also did gospel rap uh type thing and i loved it i loved it and i'm walking out here on some i'm a young adult newly born again in the lord jesus christ i'm like what 26 i find p4cm i'm happy i find artists like shailene and javon mckenzie and basically all of these rappers that are rapping for jesus and i'm like whoa love this love this i came from the world where i loved rap music and when i found it in the gospel i was like whoa it's lovely especially now that the doctrine was sound in that regard i then had this colleague at mtn right that i tried to introduce to this music because i was being edified by it she was a friend and colleague and also professes fellow professing christian and when i told her yo chiggy I'm, i've been listening to these uh, uh, gospel rap tracks uh please check it out and i gave her a usb she was like no that stuff is evil as something about it just does not sit right with me because i don't understand what rap has to do with jesus yes i just stood there and i was like rap is poetry it just with its lyrical poetry and yes the black community has ransacked it with all different kinds of profanity once they innovated it they messed it up and say and sent it over to the devil it is poetry shakespeare was a poet for crying out loud if you can respect shakespeare why under heaven do you not respect somebody that would add music to a shakespearean sonnet because that's exactly what rap is but this woman was so uh, like just deterred it, it, it was such an abhorrence to her just the prospect of listening to a man rapping about jesus that she literally wrote it off as something cancerous that belongs in hell it needs to just be severed chopped out of a body and i was like yeah that's what legalism looks like that's what legalism looks like the same woman turned out to be a devil worshiper she ended up putting casting spells on my prospects for marriage blah blah etc i was like whoa you who are sanctimonious holier than than thou with your nose in the sky not even trying to listen to some of the recommendations i gave you you ended up being the one dabbling with the occult so i don't know what's more overtly satanic between rap witchcraft i just feel as if though with rap there are subcategories in there that can be evil but there's a, there's a category that isn't however with witchcraft there is no subcategory of witchcraft that makes sense so you there who resist gospel hip-hop purely because it belongs to a genre called rap how in the world could you then look at witchcraft and see it as a feasible way of a lifestyle you're just a pharisee a teacher of the law do you understand what i'm saying i left her alone and i continued to listen to javon mckenzie i left her alone but for me it's like right now i'm having people look at me and literally denote or connote what i'm doing like the, the tantamount of an abhorrence because all of it is just rubbish given that it's all rap i told you guys i i cried i cried and i mourned i mourned and i cried some more and i told you there is an animal and i have um i stopped working out because the the the, the reason why i even stopped exercising was because this animal found me through my dance content and i confessed that there was a time when i was sensual but then i had to clean stuff up i literally came forward and made confessions and all that jazz and this beast caused me so much ptsd to understand that i stopped exercising it's like a mother dealing with a daughter that was molested by a man at the park because she was wearing rainbow colored tights and a a, a, a crop top while she was going down the swing while she was going down the slide sorry and then the mother ends up basically putting a parachute on the daughter's body so that no man will ever salivate after her daughter now that her daughter has been the victim of a child molester you cannot live like that in society because of the fear of some of one or two random perverts i came to that epiphany i happened upon that epiphany i realized that if i stop exercising i lose the thing that brings endorphins into my body the dopamine that enables me to conquer depression and i stopped working out because of, of the fact that there was a man that salivated after me due to watching me from a distance until i realized he was a psychopath he was one of those anomalies in society one of those oddballs standing at a distance eerie creepy little rando at a park looking at little girls going down a slide and imagining that that little girl is essential being turned on by a baby body how in the world that even happens i don't even understand that man was already a lustful licentious masturbating creep 
that would generally just watch porn 24 hours a day and every so often dedicate an hour or two to the gospel because he called himself a Christian. A man that would like literally salivate after images of women on the internet whether or not they are clothed. Women that are rocking up wearing entire paltenics like parachutes and he would still salivate after them. That is that was this guy. That's what this guy was. A man that struggled so severely with a, a deep perversion that of course you can't trust your little girl in their presence at the park. But they are anomalies and outliers in society. And so therefore, for you to go and put a whole balloon around your daughter, it's just so no other man would ever see even a small little piece of her cheek, let alone her like cough, unreasonable. They expect women to react that way to former mistreatment or to form a rape or form a what is a sexual abuse it's irresponsible to expect abuse victims who have now gone for therapy and stuff to walk around in society trying very hard to not provoke men to lust because like i said some of them will rape even a nun they will rape a grandmother they will rape a two-year-old there are men who are just out of line and you can never plan properly for them and the internet is unfortunately teeming at the folds with them and i just so happened to have attracted one to me and it caused me so much ptsd and so much attack and so much abuse but i stopped working out for a whole year but it stopped now it has stopped i'm losing weight nicely i'm gra i'm glad i'm grateful that i'm losing weight because i had gained some weight due to being sedentary and i am finally able to get through the day without feeling like i'm gonna commit suicide i found a solution so women with all of your envy understand the gifts of people are enviable anybody at all with any kind of special talent will always be envied by someone yours is to check yourself the bible makes it clear that envy looking uh what is this uh, anger is overwhelming and fury is a flood but who can stand before jealousy i happen to have a talent for dance and because it is a talent there will be somebody one or two people on the left and on the right of me that will covet it that will envy it as I also covet and envy certain gifts of people. However, the law says do not covet your neighbor's oxen, blah, blah, etc. Long story short, you can't basically stop yourself from envying something. But how you honor that commandment is by exercising self-control when you feel the emotion in your heart. When covetousness stirs up, when envy rises up in you, yours is to recognize it for what it is, nip it in the bud by the spirit put to death the deeds of the body. You do not get to go on right ahead and grab a woman that has been living a life that is above reproach in front of you severely persecuted in an obvious way and call her worldly what in the world if i was worldly i would have run into the sunset with that animal from the u.s if i was worldly i wouldn't have allowed what would be the tenement of my beauty to flee while still being viable with like some pretty hard knock licentious freaks out there offering me a home offering me uh, fixing of my skin dermatologically i would have gone and done only fans i would have grabbed my dance talent indeed and basically become a stripper if i was worldly i would have done whatever it takes to get out of this instead i'm holding on to jesus suffering a severe amount of persecution abuse neglect violence mistreatment by my family because i'm waiting on god and you go and you disregard all of that out of covetousness over a dance talent that i have decided to use to exercise and for those reasons you are writing me off altogether because you want to comfort yourself in having neglected me you want to give yourself ease of spirit to relieve yourself of the guilt you feel for abandoning me to die at the hands of wicked men now that i have found a way out can a woman catch a break of course not thank god i belong to him because then i'm protected from the envy of women and i'm also protected from the licentiousness of men i am going to get out of this on my own i am going to survive on my own i told you fitness is my way out i am going to get my fitness monetized and finally rent my own apartment, finally buy my own groceries, and finally get my skin cleared through a dermatologist that I will have paid throughout that journey. And until I get to the very end, of course, I'm going to get one or two randos out here in these streets, properly calling me worldly on all different kinds of things. When I am surviving a man that kidnapped me on the side of the street, do you understand? And put me in a basement, raped me repeatedly, and I found a radio in a corner that helped me not commit suicide in the middle of this insanity because I believe in a God that one day is going to send rescue efforts to take me out of that environment. Until then, mine is to hold fast to the Lord. Mine is to stay alive. I have just got to stay alive. The most important thing is to endure to the end of my sorrow and my persecution. A whole bunch of creepy little random witches around my life so it 
fit to incarcerate me and then make me the desire of salivating men. And that is going to be my ecosystem and the status quo that I dwell in 24 hours a day until I'm delivered. I will forever be looked at by perverts and I will also forever be perpetually cast spells on by jealous women. I will be in this prison until like Morgan Freeman is it um, and Patrick Swayze is it in Shawshank Redemption. I break out. I'm gonna break out of this prison but in the run-up to I will be getting proverbially repeatedly raped by some salivating creeps. They will keep throwing death curses at me. They will keep throwing suicide curses. They will keep on sending love curse life spells. Be with me or else. Be with me or else. And then I will also keep on getting women that are trying to get me to down tools on my ministry neglect me abandon me claim i'm licentious claim i am um seducing men they will literally accuse me of all manner and kinds of things except here in last the accusation okay the devil is the one that accuses us day and night before the throne of the father i got a radio playing and i'm dancing to it in this environment and whether or not you like heavy metal music is irrelevant because it's all i have this is all i have and if this thing can help me survive suicide I apologize if you imagine that this is something under heaven that needs to be scrapped because you sitting in a cushy little comfortable nine to five job that awards you an ability to be able to survive creeps that love to opportunistically pounce on women that have no money. You sitting where you're at can every day easily foresee how tomorrow you're going to be still alive. Tomorrow you can easily foresee waking up and still being safe. Tomorrow you're going to get a call from your mom telling you that she loves you. Tomorrow you are going to be hanging out with friends having lunch at a restaurant because you've got people in your life that you can rely on. I have nothing and I have no one. I have got a mother that is looking at her own daughter perish and she's doing absolutely zero. I am not looking forward to a safe tomorrow. Every single day I'm on the edge of my seat and I am shaking. Every single day I'm freaking out as to how I'm going to make it tomorrow. Every single morning I wake up scared that I'll be so depressed from demonic attack that I'm not going to be able to get through the day. I have got to survive in a very hard way every single day. But you, you, you there who can afford to cut out secular music out of your diet because you don't have anybody literally trying to kill you, pursuing you. You have got the brazen audacity to come and judge me and be like a loud siren in the background just like this car alarm that won't go off just because of nothing but jealousy. You are thoroughly picking away at my testimony even though I am a sight for sore eyes. I am a woman inebriated with sorrow being given a whole bunch of grief by some incredibly lustful, sultry idiots in this world that have got no business roaming these streets. Nonetheless, they are out of prisons because California in America made a decision to set a criminal free and then he became a whole freaking menace to my particular ecosystem and having no such thing as that perusing your backyard every single day trying to see if they can't come in anyway. You then have the brazen audacity to judge how it is that I'm surviving my extreme persecution. Like extreme persecution. Just this uh, morning, this afternoon alone, just this one day alone that I am walking at you right now. I've, I had to wash dishes six times today, six times by myself while my little sister walked around and Jafela just prancing, dilly dallying her body around in the room. That's not your life. You're not living a Cinderella life but without the desire of being a Cinderella. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're not living a Mr. Family that is apathetic to the fact that you've got a ghost pursuing you every single day. You've got that next week you're going to be able to replenish your face cream when it runs out. You've got trust that next week you're going to be able to replenish your cinnamon when it runs out. When things run out, I have to hope and pray that the Lord will avail money to me somehow. Replenish them. I freak out around my, my period every single month because I'm scared that I might get there without tampons. That's the life that I live. And you have the audacity to look at a woman working out, trying everything in her power to keep it as clean as possible. You have the brazen audacity to call me worldly when that's my life. So on the day when you've got my challenges and still able to keep it 100% holy, come to me, O Pharisee, and then judge my dance. Like, I, I please, I, I, I in, like beg you to do such a thing as that. Be in my shoes for just one day and then once you've experienced 24 hours a day in a woman who is perpetually afflicted by demonic attacks from the occult because of the fact that she is in a compromised position suffering a whole bunch with a spiritual gifting mm. if you can experience 24 hours in my body and survive then you get to tell me to down tools on taylor swift and uh, like old school beyonce because y'all have even noticed that even with beyonce's music it's old school rarely ever i will never ever use any of her most recent music because she just went totally trying i only have so few resources and i'm using them to survive so when you want to come back 
when I'm living in my own apartment and I've survived all of this massacring attempt at my life. When I'm in my own apartment and I'm cool now, maybe come back and judge me and tell me, God, I will stop using secular music. On that day, then I will encourage or motivate myself using just random instrumentals on the internet. The whatever it is that I can find that is clean. But right now, I use music that I used to dance to back in the day and I am tapping into the, the, the euphoria of dance I used to feel back then. I'm tapping into the euphoria of dance I used to feel back then. The thing that gave me energy and vibrancy, I am tapping into it because it reprieves me from the sorrow of my soul. It is the thing that I am using to survive. Do you understand? But like I said, come to me in about a year or two when I'm living in my apartment and I'm finally safe from animals that think they can come and fix my acne in exchange for sex or in exchange for me accepting their marriage proposal, in exchange for whatever it is that these demonic satanic beasts want from me. Yeah, come to me when I'm now safe from those men. And then tell me, Karabo, you, you have to completely abandon and throw away altogether all that music and only dance to this and that. Then on that day, I will understand what's going on. I have intentions to fix up a lot of things, but right now I'm in a room with some perverts. Do you understand? And I cannot get out until I break myself out. I am on a mission to break myself out. It's why I work so hard. So women, there is a song that's been ringing in my mind that the Lord is using to describe exactly what you are. There was a song in this country uh, that was done about two years ago by Nadia Nakai, Gigi Lemayne, um, Londi London, etc. And I think I, I forgot who's the other one, like five chicks. And it's called Squad, Saban Tombazan. Yeah, Aman Tombazan, no, Aman Tombazan. That basically means women, ladies. And it goes something along the lines of, move out the way, because I'm going in. I got a squad, Saman Tombazan. Now, that whole song is about these five girls or six girls, I stand created as the exact number who are priding themselves in their licentiousness and their lewdness in being powerful strong women that don't need men and they are basically singing a song about it's 180 degrees they're singing a song about how they're surviving as strong butch women that are barely dressed looking like uh what do you call this dominatrixes the way that they conquer uh, uh the what they call toxic masculinity is just by being toxic females yeah the lord kept on ringing that that song in my mind on some all these women looking at you they're like nadia nakai gigi lamain what do you call this um uh, Londi London uh, was Lasos in there I think Lasos was one of them etc yeah all of these musicians in the country very talented women I will not take it away from them but that song was just it was dirt it was rubbish it was proliferating a satanic agenda uh God is like these women are exactly like that they they all of them I promise you right now they have God they can relate to your stories they relate to your cause they relate to your pain and your heart cry concerning these mis misogynistic men like all of this toxic masculinity which is a word that the right in America because it has been come up with by the left in America, where they call, like, basically, they, they've got a bone to pick with just a, a, a severe way of being men, where you don't want to let women breathe. But frankly, I will take that term, even though I'm conservative personally, the way that I think my viewpoint, because I'm Christian, it makes sense. I'm Christian, it makes sense. But that word toxic masculinity, I will take it. Why? Because there are some men who are toxic in the way that they are trying to enforce a patriarchy they are attempting to enforce a stepford world where women are just these robots that are controlled and when you then make that observation as a woman of this toxic masculinity you will develop a misandry in you where you you can't stand men you resent them do you understand and then you imagine that the way around the situation is to be butch as females basically wear a male disposition um be barely dressed have no regard for what do you call this um virtue have no regard for uh, modesty, have no regard for the thing that makes you soft as a woman, the thing that God basically created you to be a helper suitable. You throw all that away and you wear a butchness in and of yourself. You become this like toxic female. You've got a, f a toxic femininity, right? You become a misandrious, buff, butch, very frankly, unattractive man, woman thing that can do everything yourself. You don't need men. You write them off. You thoroughly think you can do without the other half of you that the Lord God Almighty intended to indeed be just that the other half of you he made male and woman he created them two of us he created us so we, we literally there is no one without the other we complete each other and then the lord is our completion entirely so you cannot write men off because they've acted an entire fool it was the judgment from uh, uh eden 
for men to basically try to lord it over women with an iron fist and for women to constantly desire the love of their husbands and when then that love doesn't come there is a resentment and an animosity and women's solution um, to this on the earth at large and even in South Africa has been move out the way cause I'm going in I got a squad Samantha Bazani you gonna go out you're making like Nadia Nakai and Lasos and so for those reasons um, you think that you found a situation you found a solution so you imagine that you found a solution for this toxic masculinity except that's not a solution in the sight of God for you to be licentious, rocking leather from tip to toe, and some, like, what do you call this, fishnet stockings and cracking a whip. That's ungodly. It is satanic. It has come up from the pit of hell. However, the cause of it, the reason why women would even get to a point where they don't even regard virtue anymore because they feel as if I'm going to throw it out the way because over my dead body, you're going to find me wearing some polka dot whoops dress in the kitchen barefoot and pregnant with your babies over my dead body your the, the thing that's gotten you to thinking that way are the very things that have gotten me to being as misandrious as i currently am where i can't stand men to a point where if they die i frankly wouldn't even wince i've gotten there but i'm trying to offer a solution that is godly to get out of this that you go to the one patriarchy that's not going to disappoint you the one who has go, who's going to love you he loves you so perfectly that he makes himself an example as to how men should love women. Love your wives as Christ has loved the church. He is a perfect father, a perfect brother. He is a perfect male cousin. The Lord God Almighty is the perfect man that knows how to treat women well. That, that even though they are lower than him, subservient to him, the neck underneath him, they are the helper suitables. He does not treat them like they're substandard. He is egalitarian in the way that he looks at men and women. He made us equal in his sight, albeit having assigned roles roles for women roles for men and women are to submit under men but men have taken this and abused it and so you went on right ahead and wrote off the patriarchy altogether instead of writing off these why these two or three five ten individuals that are waxing worse in the last days deceiving and being deceived wicked men and imposters as it has been prophesied of them to be that way alongside janus and jambres who worm their way into the lives of weak-willed women you have gone on right ahead and grabbed this like horrible nightmarish man that is the end times result of what sin perpetuated well in to the ages looks like you grab him and you thoroughly imagine that that's just what men are and so you 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 act in a way that that offends the be all and end all of, of a man the creator man who is jesus christ you you write him off by dishonoring what he has to say about how you ought to conduct yourself as a woman how should you conduct yourself that's when when jesus says this is how you conduct yourself you conduct yourself in that way because jesus is not a stepford husband that is going to make out of you a robot that has no rights he is a loving doting that loved you that that you love because he loved you first and he knows how to perfectly love a woman and so for those reasons you ought not write off your virtue because of handling the, the first adam you cannot handle mere mortal created men that are fallen sinning against god by sinning against the man creator who is jesus christ you can't sin against god to handle men and i'm trying to make that clear I'm trying to say run to Jesus that you might be made on the straight and narrow but your reaction is rather carabo you don't know how to properly crack a whip so as a concert as women in totality when you are combined you are like Nadia Nakai, Gigi Lamain, La Sauce uh, you get my point you are properly like who are so detestable in the sight of God in dealing with men you are hypocrites in your anger at them because you're just as despised by him as he despises the men for the sins that they're committing he despises their insanity their misogyny their lewdness he despises their licentiousness their entitlement and their um, lasciviousness their sexual perversion he despises their misogyny and their chauvinism but he also despises your lack of virtue and your dominatrix thing that you're doing the butchness the disregard of your female thing the femininity the thing he gave you the softness the tranquility the peaceable and the quiet spirit which is so pe which is so precious in the sight of the lord your abandonment of that is a massive turn off to him because what it has caused you to do is abandon and neglect women that are trying to be godly to a point where some of the most lewd and licentious men that you can't stand also have basically uh, they, these women you've now placed at their mercy you women have placed me at the mercy of some of the most evil men on earth because of the fact that i refuse to go and wear spandex latex christian lubiton like some cracking a black whip wearing some devil horns and some fishnet stockings because that's not how i'm going to handle horrible men you then are leaving me be 
and in then allowing me to basically rot and waste away in my sorrow find the smallest little infraction that i am walking in and magnify it to a point of therefore justifying why you've abandoned me to the mercy of some of the most evil men on earth you are an abomination to god women for that reason you can relate with me you get where i'm coming from but my solution or my strategy to survive this is resented by you you hate that the way that you dealt with your cheating husband is by sleeping with his best friend and so when i speak out against fornication you think of me as this thing that has it's just backward or this thing you you covet or you envy virtue and so the smallest little infraction you pick at it and now you're picking at my exercise the exercise of which remember i told you i cried and i cried and you ignored me and i went back to it and it just so happens that the only way around to gain motivation basically to work out consistently is by taking myself back before life sucked taking myself back before life sucked where i just danced for pleasure and it gave me lots of happiness and i am revisiting a better time and so i'm using music that takes me to a better time you are picking at it picking at it do you understand picking at what i'm doing without regarding all the other things that i have done to make sure i clean it up taking out speeding it up it's changing its voice that you might not even hear the lyrics and so therefore gauge it as an instrumental fully clothed fully clothed i am not trying to stumble and yet it does not matter to you because this is the infraction that you have found you have cracked a whip in the life of a person that already has got 10,000 whips cracked every single day by some nefarious men the disgusting men of which you similarly despise and yet you are not even trying to help me survive them because according to you perhaps they're the my they're my handler perhaps in one case in one odd occasion we're gonna accommodate these narcissistic creeps because they're gonna handle this goody two-shoes woman some of y'all call yourselves christians and you are thoroughly judging me for what i'm doing you walk away from my ministry you can't stay away for too long because like i said you can relate with me so you keep coming back but in your coming back you've got this passive aggression i don't need you women i only need god i'm not going to get helped by any of you i'm going to get helped by god individually but when i survive this by myself when i finally monetize when i finally get my fitness done when i finally move out of this woman's house when i finally get done what needs to be done on that day you're going to realize that you're an abomination that literally watched a woman die until she survived because she's morgan freeman in shawshank redemption i am going to get out of this by scooping with a teaspoon dirt out of a wall until eventually i've created such a canyon and a cave a, a whole tunnel in this wall that I've, i'm outside now a prison i am getting out of this shawshank style that's what you must understand and when i'm on the other side you're going to be ashamed of yourself you are grieving to god women and i don't even know why you don't spot it why you have no no conviction by the holy spirit because you call yourselves christians that's the thing but instead the lord looks at you the way that he views you is like that squat sabantombazan made up of nadia nakai gigi lamain um la sauce lim ikimang londi landa and the other one i don't know i can't remember all of them that's what's good all of those ladies that's their solution they're like frank sinatra i did it my way while men are looking at me as something that is provoking them i'm like proper they look at me as something seducing them but it's not all men that are looking at me this way i told you it's creeps but you see the the creeps the the one two three like basically vastly outnumbered creeps are the ones that wreak the most they're the ones that make it hard for moms to take their daughters to the park they're the ones that make it hard for dads to leave their daughters at school and feel safe. These creeps might be just one random, odd, freaky guy sitting in a corner, shrouded by darkness. It might just be one guy, but that one guy causes so much damage in society and so much paranoia that no one feels safe. So I'm not necessarily in danger at the hands of all men. Just a, a handful of the kinds of men that Ali Wan destroys so much. They're Ted Bundy. They're Moses Sitole. They are the... They are Hannibal Lecter. They are the serial killers in the town. Everybody have a curfew of 6 p.m. It might be just one guy, but he's dangerous enough for everybody to lock their daughters inside. When I'm crying against these little creeps, you are sitting where you're sitting as sanctimonious and self-righteous women. Thoroughly imaginative of the fact that at least you don't have that creep looking into your particular window. Once you have drawn for yourself a stalker, it's over. 
until you kill that stalker or that stalker dies off or that stalker gets hit by a car or that stalker gets arrested but like the word like proper the stalker is not necessarily going to stalk every woman but you pray to god that he does not stalk you i unfortunately just so happen to be stalked by one of those random creeps that sit outside of a school playground and i also just so happen to be the unfortunate one little girl that he kidnapped not every girl was kidnapped but every girl was in danger every girl was but only one girl became the victim i'm the victim of these animals all the women that have dropped at their hands they're victims in a world full of eight billion people half of which are women that survived them but there is a small percentage of women that didn't survive them and i am one of them so your lack of compassion is tactless it is fruitless your lack of um, uh, what is this uh, uh, ability to relate with my story or the fact that you can relate but you are apathetic of how much you can relate that makes you ridiculous it makes you a sizable hypocrite in the eyes of god in which case i'm like i cried for help you did not come through now that i don't need your help you're judging me do you i'm gonna get out of this and when i do and finally clean up the act you imagine i must clean up right now when all i have is a little radio in a room where some rapist keeps on ramming into me you have the audacity to have to feel some kind of way about what's going on with my life like seriously speaking i'm gonna get out of this and when i do only on that day unfortunately how far away it is will you feel ashamed of yourself for having sat around watching a woman suffer like no man's business and look at nothing but your jealousy over her dance her singing her beauty her whatever it is that you covet you can't even be comforted politely by at least the fact that my skin has broken out like no man's business you have at least that you got me having a pizza face now rejoice in that but that's not enough that's not enough I am surviving by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and you are accusing me since you are like your father the devil of things I have not done. Repent because currently you're so far away from God that when he looks at you, he sees these squasa mantombazana, abanga konganga, women that are barely dressed, cracking whips like dominatrix in a song claiming to have conquered wicked men when the lord despises their wickedness just as much as he does of those men you are just the same as that creepy little psychopath outside of the park salivating after your daughter you are the same thing currently just one that is however seated on a high horse imaginative of being better than that so move out the way because i'm coming in i've got a squasaman tombazane do you until you perish in your sins and wonder why in the world you went to hell I'm calling you to repentance if you don't want to do you next time I get some dream or a vision or some kind of a, a a word of understanding as to how women are viewing me and my exercise all I'm going to respond with is literally just rolling my eyes on some of these hypocrites all of y'all are just a bunch of dominatrixes that hate men at the expense of God all the best I'm signing out in Christ's name Cran K bye